All Temple Intervene. A new serial play by Francis Durbridge, produced by Martin C. Webster. Episode 2, concerning Sir Felix Rayborn. <laughs> Temple, a celebrated novelist and private detective, is investigating a series of murders committed by a notorious criminal known as the Marquis. Temple discovers that another man by the name of Roger Storey is also making inquiries concerning the Marquis. And Temple makes Roger's acquaintance after a motorcar smash, in which both Temple and his wife, Steve, are involved. He's forcing you over, Paul. Get down, Steve. Get down. For Pete's sake, get down. Look out. Look out. For the love of Mike, get it over. Get down, Steve. Come on, Paul. Paul, are you all right? Darling, how about you? I'm all right, darling. Where's Sammy? Oh, my God, he's under the bonnet. Here's someone coming. Still... He'll give you a hand. I say, I say, I say, are you two all right? I was on the other side of the road. There's someone under the bonnet. We've got to move the car over. But, good Lord. Right, what's the matter? But, well, aren't you Paul Temple? Yes. I say, well, what an extraordinary coincidence. You know, I've been trying to get in touch with you all the evening. Really? Yes. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. My name's Story. Roger Story. Roger Story? Look, Mr. Story, there's a man under that bonnet, and we've got to get him out. Rather, I'll get right the other. I'd like it. I can get him out now if you can, if you can hold it. Can you? Be quick, old boy. I say, I say, this is some weight. Okay, all right, you can let go. Oh. Is he badly hurt? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid so. I say, where the devil is the fellow who drove the lorry? I haven't seen him, have you? No. And I've got a hunch that we shan't. Oh, there's a constable near the lorry, darling. I, I don't think he can see us. We're over the other side, officer. Okay. My word, this is a pretty nasty smasher. Is anybody hurt? Yes. We had a passenger with us, Constable, but I, I'm i afraid he's... Oh, Paul, he's not... Look out, she's going oh, to faint. Geez. It's all right. I've got her. No, no, I'm all right, Paul. This blackout, such a nuisance, you can't see what you're doing. Is this young lady your wife, sir? Yes, if you flash your torch down, I'll show you my identity card. Thank you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, I didn't recognize oh, you. Oh, that's sir. all right. Is there an hotel around here, somewhere near? Yes, sir. The, the Regency, about uh, 50 yards up on the right-hand side. Oh, thank you. Would you mind taking my wife to the hotel, Mr. Story? I'll join you later. Yes, rather. I shan't be long, darling. Yes, all right. We'll be in the lounge. What do you need, Mrs. Temple? There's a jolly good double brandy. I can't. I could do with one myself. Oh, that, that's better. What's happened to the lorry driver? He seems to have completely disappeared in thin air. I don't like the look of this steering, sir. Funny sort of accident, Mr. Temple, this, if you ask me. Funny sort of accident altogether. One large whiskey and soda, a large brandy and ginger ale... And a lager beer. That'll uh, it'll be eight and three, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Mm. Here we are, darling. Oh, thank you. Mr. Story. Oh, thanks. Ah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Now, suppose you tell us your side. My side of the story. Well, I'm... I'm dashed if I know quite where to begin. Supposing you take your time and begin at the beginning. Mrs. Temple, did you ever meet a girl called Alice Mapleton? Alice Mapleton? Yes, I think I did. A tall, dark, rather attractive girl. Yes. We met at a party about two years ago. Lady Alice Mapleton? She was the first girl that was murdered. By the Marquis, I mean. They found her body... They found her body on the bank of a stream. About four miles from Richmond. She'd been strangled. We were engaged, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Oh, how dreadful for you. That was just over four months ago. Four months. Seems almost four years now. 
when I think about it. Tell me, was your fiancée worried at all, or...? Yes. Yes, she was terribly worried. Alice was always a moody sort of person. I, I suppose you'd call her temperamental, really. The night before, before it happened, I, I had quite a row with the poor darling. She'd been so irritable and, well, terribly difficult to get on with. I realize now, of course, why she was like that. You mean that she was being blackmailed? Yes. Yes, she was being blackmailed. He's a cunning sort of a devil, you know, Temple. He blackmails his victims until they can stand it no longer, and then... Sir Graham Forbes tells me that you identified the body of a girl called Rita Cartwright. Is that true? Yes. As after Alice was murdered, I was so desperate, and I, I suppose almost out of my mind, that I started making, well, I suppose you might call them investigations of my own. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I hadn't any faith in the police or, or Scotland Yard or, or Sir Graham Forbes, but... But well, I had to do something about it myself. Yes, yes, I understand. Well, after I'd made rather a fool of myself on one or two occasions, I, I decided to enlist the services of a girl I knew, a girl called Rita Cartwright. She'd always been a very big friend of Alice's, and to be quite frank, rather fancied herself as a sort of private detective. Yes, I knew Miss Cartwright slightly. Eh? She was an impetuous sort of girl, but not by any means a fool. Mr. Story. Why do you think Rita Cartwright was murdered? Shall I tell you why, Mrs. Temple? Because she'd found out something. Because she'd found out something about a man called... Sir Felix Rayborn. Sir Felix Rayborn? Yes. You mean Sir Felix Rayborn, the Egyptologist? Yes. What did she find out about Sir Felix? Mr. Temple, before I answer your wife that question, would you... Would you mind telling me something? Well, that rather depends what it is. Tell me, do I strike you as being a rather frightened sort of person? No, no, no. I, I, no, I don't think so. Nervous, yes, but not frightened is the story. No, not frightened. Well, I am frightened, Temple. Desperately, hellishly frightened. During the past six months, there have been four attempts on my life. That's why I wanted to get in touch with you. I wanted to tell you everything I know. Everything Rita Cartwright knew about the Marquis. Who is the Marquis? You know? I'm not sure. But I think... You think it might be Sir Felix Rayborn? Two days before Alice was murdered, she paid Sir Felix a visit. I don't know why. I've never been able to find out. Twenty-four hours before the police discovered the body of Carlton Rogers on the beach at New Haven, he had dined with Sir Felix at his house in John's Wood. And the last person to see Myron Harwood alive, Mrs. Temple, was Sir Felix Rayborn. Are you sure of these facts? Absolutely certain. Who discovered them? Rita Cartwright discovered them, Mr. Temple. And in my opinion, that's why she was murdered. Past 11. Surely Price hasn't... Oh, hello, Price. Oh, good evening, sir. Sir Graham Forbes is here, sir, and Superintendent Bradley. They're in the library, sir. Oh, Sir Graham Forbes. They must have heard about the accident. Oh, are you all right, madam? Yes. I overheard Sir yes, Graham thank say you, something Price. about a motor car. Oh, we're all right, Price. Will you bring some coffee? Very good, sir. Ah, so here you both are, at last. This is an unexpected pleasure, Sir Graham. Well, it can't be much of a pleasure, my dear, not at this time of night. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, do you uh, know Superintendent Bradley? How do you do, Superintendent? How no, do you do? Do sit down, please. Uh, they telephoned through to the yard about the accident, Temple. And... Yes. I don't think accident is quite the right word, Bradley. No. No, no that was my impression. I was sorry to hear about Sammy Wren. He was a queer little devil, but I'm afraid I'd got rather a sneaking regard for him. Was Sammy able to tell you anything, Temple, about... About the Marquis? Yeah. No. But oddly enough, he did tell me something about a man called Roger Story. Yes, we know Story. He's a decent young fellow, but uh, something of a nuisance at times. Yes, I can well imagine that. Uh, Lady Alice Mapleton was his fiancée, you know. 
And she was the yes, first... Yes, she was the first girl to be murdered. Yes, yes, I know. Hmm. Sir Graham, tell me, do you believe that we are up against not only... not only this person who calls himself... or herself the Marquis, but... A definite criminal organisation? Yes. Yes. Yes, Temple, I do. And if you want to know my opinion, it's an organisation which is held together by one thing, and one thing only. Blackmail. In other words... In other you... words, Steve, find the Marquis and your organisation will tumble like... like a house of cards. Yes. You may be right, Sir Graham. Tell me, have you heard of a man called Sir Felix Rayborn? Sir Felix Rayborn? Why, yes. Yes, of course. He's an Egyptologist. Lives in St. John's Wood. Rather a queer bird, judging from all accounts. Why do you ask? I ask, Sir Graham, because I'm given to understand that two days before Lady Alice Mapleton was murdered, she paid Sir Felix a visit. That 24 hours before the police discovered the body of Carlton Rogers, he had dined with Sir Felix at his home in St. John's Wood. And that the last person to see Myron Harwood alive was Sir Felix Raybon. Great Scott, are you sure of this, Temple? They're facts which can be easily verified. Sir yes, Graham. and they will be verified too. I'll see to that. Sir Felix Raybon. We still haven't told Mr. Temple the real reason of our visit, sir. Hmm? Oh, no, 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 of course. When I arrived home tonight, this note was waiting for me. Why it wasn't delivered to the yard, I can't imagine. Anyway, it's from a man called Roddy Carson. Do you remember him? Roddy Carson? Yeah. Rod yes, I remember Roddy Carson. He's a tough, illiterate little bounder. He, he served a term in 19, uh, 1929 for mm -hmm. dope peddling. Yes, that's Roddy Carson. I'd better read you the note. Dear Sir Graham, I heard your broadcast the other night, and as I'm wondering if you was on the level. If you was on the level, and I can trust you, meet me at Follard Glen tonight at 12.30. I shall be waiting near the clump of trees about a mile from the road. There is something I must tell you, Roddy Carson. Have you tested this for fingerprints, Bradley? Yes, we've checked it up. Roddy Carson sent the note all right. Where is Forrad Glen? It's about six miles the other side of Hampstead Heath, Steve. Ross should be there by now, sir. Yes. Ross? I contacted the yard straight away. I got Inspector Ross and two of the flying squad units on the job. I thought we'd join them later, Temple. We saw Inspector Ross at the Golden Cage, didn't we, Paul? Inspector Ross? At the Golden Cage? Yes. Why, Ross lives out Wimbledon Way. What the devil would he be doing near the Elephant and Castle? I told the boys to pick him up at his home. I hope to goodness they haven't missed him. Yes. Yes. I hope so, too. Is that you, Ross? He's over on the right, isn't he? Oh, good evening, Mr. Graham. Good evening, Inspector. How long have you been here? Oh, I say about three quarters of an hour. We formed a patrol circle right round the glen, sir, with uh, Smith, Wardner, Hale, Dixon, and myself. Good. You haven't seen anyone? No, sir, not a soul. Hello, Inspector. What? Hello, Mr. Temple. Didn't see you. This is a surprise, sir. Yes, yes, isn't it? No rest for the wicked, hey, Ross? Apparently not, sir. Which way do you think Ruddy Carson will come? Well, it's difficult to say. There's a clump of trees about 50 yards down there on the left-hand side, and then there's another batch higher up here. And what is it? What I have... Yes, there's someone coming. Paul, no. is that you? Oh, oh, goodness, darling, 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 you are the limit. I told you to wait you... in the car. Yeah, you forgotten your torch, darling. I hadn't forgotten it, Steve. I... Sorry, darling, but Shh. I... Shh! Had... Did you hear that? What? Shh. Well, I'm blown if I could hear anything. You will, Sir Graham. You will. Now, listen. 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 Well, I may be deaf, but I... Shh! Oh! I heard that all right. Quiet. 
it's near those trees, Ross. I'll swear it is. But I've just come from that direction, sir. I never saw anyone. No, no, you wouldn't see him. What do you mean? I, I, how can I help seeing him? If you he don't was... mean he's hanging from one of those trees? Oh, darling. What are we waiting for, for heaven's sake? No, no, you stay with Mrs. Temple, Randy. You come with me, Ross. Yes, sir. Poor devil. No wonder I never saw him. All right, I'll give you a hand. I've got some brandy in the car, Temple. There it is. There's no need for brandy, Sir Graham, I'm afraid. Oh, poor devil. Do you recognize him, sir? Yes. Yes, this is Roddy Carson, all right. He must have been taken by surprise, so he's got a revolver. Well, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Well, there's a wallet here with, oh, seven, eight, ten, seventeen pounds, and it hasn't been touched by the look of things. What's that envelope you've just taken from his pocket? Hmm? Oh, it's empty. No, there's something scribbled on the back, isn't there? Yes. Looks as though it's jotted something down. It's a name and address. Uh, uh, look, uh, could you bring a torch over here, sir? And, uh... Ah, that's better. Good Lord, Temple, look. Look what it says. Sir Felix Rayborn. 492. Maupassant Avenue. St. John's Wood. Sir Felix Rayborn? What the devil are you smiling at, Temple? I was just thinking, Sir Graham. Fancy Ruddy Carson being able to spell. No pass on. Listening to episode two of the new Paul Temple serial, Paul Temple Intervenes, with Carl Bernard as Paul Temple. The part of Steve was played by Bernadette Hodgson, Roger Story by Sidney Taffler, a constable by Chris Gittins, a waiter by Hal Bryant, Price by David Compton, Sir Graham Forbes by Lester Muddit, Superintendent Bradley by Godfrey Baisley, and Inspector Ross by Edgar Norfolk. Production by Martin C. Webster.